Josh Widdicombe, ex of M. That was a bit of an intense start to Saturday morning, Neil. <laughs> a bit much. Sorry. It's all right. It was a lady in the end, uh, Charles just said. In and the we, video. Uh, in the video. I just thought, I thought, I just thought you meant the voice, I was thinking. What a twist that would be. Yeah. I thought it was Keith. Was he called Keith? Keith Flint, yes. Keith Flint. We're talking, if you're, if you're listening on the podcast and you didn't get to hear the uh, song due to rights reasons, we're talking about Smack My Bitch Up by The Prodigy. Although, that would be a good game for the podcast listeners, wouldn't it? We'll start talking, we won't say which song we've just been <laughs> listening to, but we'll start talking about it. They can try and work out what it was. No? No. Okay. How have you been this week? Not too bad, thank you very much. Yeah? Yeah. Any uh, news? Um, just got a cold. Just got a cold? Yeah. And we're getting a very weird bit of feedback. Should we set up where we are? Yeah, you, you what, sorry? We need to set up. We're not in our normal Yeah, studio. we're not in our normal studio. That's where we're getting our feedback. Um, we're, we're, we're in a smaller studio and, um, we are, we're on top of one another really, aren't we? Yeah, hi. I mean, it's at times like this where intern Charles really is more trouble than he's worth. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all agree on that. If you could wait outside, John. <laughs> if you could wait outside, preferably by the kettle. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Don't go. Don't go. Um, no, I mean, no, actually. Okay, see you later, Charles. Uh, this week, Neil, I had a bit of an incident with a um, with a beer. Yeah, you did, didn't you? If you, I mean, I'll, I'll let you, you, you see, see, this fills you with joy. You might as well fill us in. So we were planning um, the live version of the Edinburgh show that we're doing. 9th to the 12th of August, 10.30pm, Assembly George Square xfm.co.uk for tickets and we, we did it in the pub because we're lads yeah we were, we were sat there going it's on the 9th to 12th of August 10.30pm Assembly George Square tickets available on xfm.co.uk or edfringe.com either it's that kind of thing uh, and we had a couple of beers on the go lads it was quite a busy pub of course it was it's London it's a sunny it's a sunny Wednesday evening and we just grabbed a table after, after another party had vacated it. Yeah. And you started to drink... The wrong beer. Someone else's beer. I was thinking, why is my beer so flat? Why, why is my beer so flat so quickly? I, was, I think this is the Sun and 13 Cantons in Soho. This should be... This shouldn't be a bad beer. And then I, then I looked down and I had two beers in front of me. Ah! Oh, I mean, I don't know how Ebola spreads, but I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> I, I genuinely, I didn't know what to do. Like, what would you have done in that situation? I, I kind of stiff up a lip. I thought, what did Britain do to win the Second World War? C kept calm and carried on. You might have thought that in your head, but you, rea you reacted like a cat with a furball. No, I didn't. <laughs> that, that, yeah, you're playing it up for the radio. That's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't do that. I didn't do that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, well, what would you have done? What would you have done? I'd have, uh, I'd have been a lad and finished it. Would you? <laughs> Poured them in together. You've got, you've got half a cider and made it a snake bite, I imagine. <laughs> well, um, you know, it was, it was a horrible experience. I'm still with us. We'll see if we survive till 1 p.m. 1 a.m. 1 p.m. Oh, God. Uh, 1 a.m., that's, I mean, that's too far. But 1 p.m., that's all the listeners really need. Um, sh sh shall I kind of recover from that? And what, I mean, how long is this cup of tea taking, Chuck? That was the Kooks, not Nar Roger. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> uh, seriously, I, I presumed it was the new single from Chic, but uh, it, that is the Kooks. And um, this is Josh Widdicombe on a Saturday morning. Um, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't play Chic, would we? No. So I think it probably is. They've just called them. They've just come under the Kook. They've co they've come under, under the banner of the Kooks so that they can get on XFM. <laughs> the franchise, the name. They franchise the name. Wait till you have Jake Bugg's next single. It's unbelievable. It's Parliament. Um, now, it's uh, any other business uh, in which we um, people pick us up on the uh, their minor irritations with the show, whether it be the slight echo on the first link, or um, or just you know misspelling, which is very rare because we're a we're a speech show. <laughs> uh, if you have an issue, uh, then uh, email it in, and Neil will uphold it with this sound. Oh. Didn't like that one, Charles? It's, so, my, it's my purple bell, leave it alone. Oh, Neil. Oh, I didn't mean... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Neil. Out the gutter, so oh, come morning. on. Saturday morning. Unbelievable. First we play Chic, and then you bring the tone down. Now, God, I've got a real cold, haven't I? Can you hear it? I have. You yeah. have. You yeah, guys good. have. Yeah. Oh, what, what a world. <laughs> um, 
if you if we do, don't uphold it, if we reject it, then it's I just ignore you. Just ignore me. Okay. Number one, Josh. In podcast fifty two, you claimed Rule Fox was the nineties Newcastle winger. This is true. Well, in that case, that's fine. <laughs> But he wasn't most famous for his 51 appearances in all competitions at Newcastle. He was more famous for playing at Spurs and Norwich. Please be more specific next time. Big love, Callum Steele. I disagree with that. Reasons? I think he was in his pomp at Newcastle. I'd associated him with him on the wing at Newcastle when they just got promoted, maybe in tandem with, say, Beardsley and Rob Lee. They say this show's too football-y, but this, this argument is going to get... What, what, do you, what do you think? While I remember him in his time at Newcastle, I think, for me, he is most famous for being at Spurs. No, it would be Norwich before Spurs as well. No, not at all. With Anderton, when he was playing and not on the physio's table. Um, Next thing you're going to tell me, that you don't think the Kooks are the funkiest band of all time. Well, that goes without saying. All right, OK. <laughs> um, are you going to uphold or reject it? I'm going to uphold, Callum. Unbelievable. Hello. In episode 68, there was talk of an individual in Morgan Solihull stealing sweets. I don't remember that chat, do you? Uh, it was times you embarrassed your parents, and I, uh, calls, I worked in Morgan's and caught a kid stealing sweets. Oh, really? They didn't wait for this. I'm led to believe it was my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Open brackets. I will not name names as his career as an English language teacher in career may be at risk. <laughs> Close brackets. That's the first time career and career have been put in the same sentence since um, there's a song on Wowie Zowie by Pavement that does that, isn't there? Where it just says career, career, career. But it's, if you look in the lyrics, it's the different types of career. Should we get back to the email? Sorry. But we shall refer to him as Ryan C. He had a Robin Hood attitude towards sweets as a youth. <laughs> what a lovely image. Well, due to such actions, he was unable to take part in what was the under tense football season at Ulverley Hawks. Being the defensive linchpin of our team, his absence hit, hit us hard. Already struggling in Division 4, oof, we found ourselves relegated. Cheers, Neil. Matt. Um, Can you... I mean, the kid probably was under 10, but I can't, <laughs> I can't think... Oh, I don't know. But did you... Did you report him to the authorities? No, that's, well, his mum, if you call His mum? So she would have banned him from the... He got a kind of Luis Suarez-style ban. Yeah. Four months with no footballing activity. <laughs> he couldn't attend training. Couldn't be in the team group photo just because of you. And he was, all he was was a Robin Hood of sweets. Dear Josh from Producer Neil, I'm a long-term listener, first-time writer-inner. In episode 67 of the podcast, whilst talking about Scottish independence, sounds about right for the kind of things we were discussing. <laughs> I hope they haven't been listening to the, the LBC podcast, by mistake. <laughs> At 36 minutes, 11 seconds, guest Ian Sterling claims that Scotland would push off from the UK and attach itself to Sweden should they gain independence. Surely he means Norway, since that is the closest country across the North Sea, and it would not be possible to attach Scotland to Sweden as both Norway and Denmark are in the way. I think you will agree it's important that we are all clear of the full consequences of Scotland leaving the UK. Yours pedantically, Sarah. I mean, she makes a very good point. Oh, as a Scottish man, how do you feel about this point now? Well, yeah, she's got it. She's got it nailed on. She knows her geography better than I do towards kind of northern Europe. So, and also, um, I think that's. A, I mean, that will affect the vote because Sweden's a lot happier place than Norway, isn't it? Isn't, isn't it? Sweden the happiest place in the world? Or is that Denmark? I thought Norway was the happiest place in the world. Norway, mate. <laughs> Norway. <laughs> We're going to leave that one in the air because we couldn't. Uh, we didn't ever really came to a conclusion. If you have any other business, email us at xfm.co.uk. Josh Widdicombe. Yes. XFM. The Arctic Monkeys on XFM. Bit of, a, bit of a sharp end to the song, but we won't dwell on that because we've got other things to talk about on the Josh Widdicombe show. Number one. Number one. This is what we want your tweets on this morning. Opening other people's mail. Have we not done this before? We should have. It seems like it seems like such a go-to topic. <laughs> it seems I, I'm, I'm loath to use the phrase uh, "classic Josh Widdicombe show" on XFM, but this really is this really is Route One. Have you ever opened anyone's? We, well, I'll answer my own question. Go ahead. Um, university. We lived in a what used to be a Chinese takeaway, and because um, you're a bit of a scamp when you're a student, you'd open their old mail. And uh, we received a letter uh, written entirely in Chinese 
uh, accompanied by a picture of two old Chinese people stood in front of the Statue of Liberty. Oh, you've said this. And, uh, yeah, they're two children with their Mickey Mouse ears on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which we stuck on the wall for a year. Which, now in hindsight, is a bit weird. Um, have you ever opened... We've got, we've got a pile of mail in my house. Have you? Uh, of, of the previous people that are never going to collect it. But I feel I shouldn't... Shouldn't shred. I think it gets to a point where you just go, oh, forget it. I'm just going to move out and leave it in there. Okay. I think. Yeah. It's, the mail's getting so big, I'm going to have to move house. <laughs> have you ever opened anyone else's mail now? When, again, it's university, it's rented properties. Or, or, yeah, of yeah. course it's rented properties, I mean. Yeah. So yeah. We used to get... It's not... I mean, I don't just mean generally, like, going into other people's <laughs> homes. I know that. <laughs> no, we used to get, um... We, we one time had bailiffs come round for a, for someone else who'd kind of defaulted on their credit card. Oh, God. Uh, what do they take? Nothing, because literally there's nothing of value to take in our house at <laughs> university. We didn't have a, a front door for about three months. What? Where did you go to uni? Uh, in Twickenham. Oh, yeah, it was quite a nice area. Yeah, it got kicked off its hinges at a party and we couldn't bother to replace it. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, no, no real exciting mail. Came no. to my house. One of my flatmates, uh, they, they had an argument when they were really drunk and they uh, kicked down, the, one of them kicked down the door and then um, to get his dad to fix it, he had to pretend that he'd got locked in his bedroom so he'd kick down the door. <laughs> Hope they're listening. Uh, second topic, I mean, that, 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 was, that topic was opening other people's mails, not kicking down doors. Although when have you kicked down a door is also the third topic now. So the first topic, opening other people's mails. Second topic, when have you kicked down a door. Third topic, oh, odd punishments parents have given you. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this. I saw it online. Mm. Um, this guy has created a get along t shirt. Right. For his two kids when they row. So basically it's an extra large t shirt. I mean, he's not create he's bought a he's bought a big t shirt. Okay, he's bought a big t shirt and written in a felt tip pen the get along t shirt. And then when his kids misbehave, he puts them both in the same in oh, the t shirt. That's, that's a good punishment, isn't it? That's great. I'm gonna do that with you and Charles. <laughs> Josh Radical Joe on XFM, and now it is time for Nish Kumar. Good morning. Or is it? How are you, Nish? I'm good. Good. Now, each week, uh, you try and uh, bring one of your conspiracy theories, and uh, get it past producer Neil to put it in Nishipedia. That's right. Now, you've had a bad run. Bad run. What do you have for us this week? All right, this week, we're on solid ground. This is a simple <laughs> conspiracy. No, just a very simple conspiracy. Digital television is a tool by the government to brainwash everyone. Oh, yeah. Right. It's in. <laughs> in what way? There's a group of people on the internet who believe that the only reason we made the switch from the analog television system to the digital system is because the government are either... Now, again, this is where the conspiracy forks off. Either it's because they're spying on us or it's because they're using the digital signal to broadcast uh, brainwashing signals to the right. public. So the next time you're sat there enjoying Rosemary and Thyme on ITV oh. Plus One, or you're watching The Matrix for the fourth time that week on ITV4. <laughs> What's happening is the government are sending secret messages into your brain slash monitoring wow. your movements. And this... I'm, I'm not making many movements for them to monitor <laughs> if I'm watching digital TV. Yes, <laughs> yours would be a very tedious Truman Show. <laughs> um, this me? is a direct. This is a direct quote. It's not really as far fetched as you may think. Experts say that anything is built for one particular purpose, but can indeed be reconfigured to perform the exact opposite. For instance, a car is built to drive forward, but it could also go backwards. Wow. That's science in action. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so what? It's 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 absorbing information. What information? Well, just it's like it's used to monitor us. I mean, that's that's actually so the, the more plausible in, of the two. Are involved in TV shows now? No, it's the government. It's always the government, Josh. Remember, I can't believe after all of this time on Nishopedia, you haven't learned that things go all the way to the top. Oh, they always go to the top. They, they hit Davina McCall and then they just keep rising. <laughs> McCall to Cameron. So, oh, it's difficult because to be fair, the only reason a lot of the shows on digital TV would would be watched is if you were being brainwashed yeah. into sitting there and watching them. Yeah, exactly. So, also, in this era of Sky Plus and on-demand television, why do we need Plus One channels? It's clearly a brainwashing agent. Yeah, but 
I'm also a bit of a company man. An XFM you can get on Freeview and Sky and the like. <laughs> <laughs> He's drunk the Kool-Aid. <laughs> I don't want to limit the audience. So, uh, <laughs> this isn't going into Nishipedia. Oh, I thought it was a home run. <gasps> Brought down by the man. Josh Widdicombe. One last job. That's what this is. This is Adam <laughs> Hills, Alex Brook and Josh Riddicombe together for the final time. That's all right. <laughs> Until next Friday, live on Channel 4. Let's get the plug in early. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. This is what we sound like the morning after doing yeah. a live TV show. Yeah. I um, do, you, do you get a come down from doing live TV? Do you feel that... I don't. Just to be clear. I do after reading all of the tweets, slagging off my T-shirt. Yeah, you had a bad T-shirt. We'll, we'll tweet a picture of Alex's T-shirt. Because uh, you, you want... To wear a... T what did you think of it, Adam? <laughs> if you had to describe it, because it's radio. Every, like, three weeks, Alex comes in with a shirt or a T-shirt or something and goes, what did you think of this? And we all go, yeah, it looks all right. <laughs> <laughs> just opposite on Twitter. Three weeks, well... Last well, series. Well, no, the, the, the last series, yeah. I had to go at it before the start, but the Chinese waiter outfit. <laughs> <laughs> See, again, no, that was another one where I looked at it and thought, I'm going to look good in this. <laughs> I, said, I, I said, you look like Chairman Mao, and you said, who's he? <laughs> <laughs> I have since Googled it. You have That's since Googled it. <laughs> and then you walked into the writer's room, and one of the writers just turned to you and went, just a glass of red wine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Alex last night wore a black t-shirt with what can only be described as a kind of leather stripe across the <laughs> middle, the, the nipple area. <laughs> I just did. thought it was so stylish. <laughs> well, I think, do you know what? I think it was one of those things that in, in the t-shirt the as a whole looked good. It was a black t-shirt, but just with like a, yeah. a leather strip across <laughs> the boobs. Yeah. But on TV... When the camera cuts you off at the bottom of the leather strip, <laughs> it, it really did look like there was probably nothing below it, and you were just wearing a boob tube. Also, yeah. on the on the TV, the leather was shinier. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Everyone thought I had a logo that had been taped up. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's up. Like, what was underneath the T-shirt? And it was just me. <laughs> um, with uh, you, you also had another option, didn't you, Alex? That you told me. What was that? That you toyed with. There was, a, there, was there was there was the one. The t-shirt was in white and it had a suede stripe. But I didn't. I didn't <laughs> like that because I thought I looked like a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> but in hindsight, I wish I'd have gone for that. <laughs> Are you going to wear it again? Yeah, I'm going to wear it tonight when I go out. Have you washed it? Nah. It's dry. <laughs> the worst thing is it's dry clean only, so if I want to wear it again, I've got to pay for the extra. Well, a bit of it's wipe clean, to be fair. <laughs> and that is a great pick-up line to just, you know, have a shirt you've had on for three days, and when a girl looks, he goes, can you smell that? <laughs> <laughs> Smells like television. <laughs> Studio lighting. Right uh, down. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you got coming up in the series, clothes well, I didn't admit this to, <laughs> to, to what not to wear. The worst but. thing is, is that genuinely... When I went shopping last week, I thought that was my best outfit. <laughs> <laughs> you went hard early on. I, w I wanted to go in on a high, I genuinely did. So what else have we got waiting for us? <sighs> I don't know now, I've got to rethink the whole wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> have you got another Chinese waiter's outfit coming up? I've got a Chinese waiter t-shirt. <laughs> That's the, that's the thing with a Chinese to waiters t-shirt. Anyway, um, <laughs> I um, I went to Latitude Festival, mm -hmm. and I was I got I got quite drunk, and I don't remember watching Bombay Bicycle Club, but I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's no reflection on them. Josh Whittingham, for for those of you who might be wondering is one of those drunk people that doesn't get gradually drunk. No, it just happens. <laughs> it's just like, you literally, in the middle of a conversation, you'll look away for a second, look back and go, Josh just got drunk. That's <laughs> <laughs> so when I've smelt alcohol. Um, one of the things we're talking about, opening other people's post. Um, I um, This is a text from Ian uh, in North London. I accidentally opened a letter that was a girl who was splitting up with a guy. <laughs> oh. Because uh, she had changed while volunteering at Camp America. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I mean, what would you do in that situation if you'd opened that? Well, I definitely wouldn't what? let my missus go to Camp America. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, uh, wait, if Ian is listening, uh, is it was it someone that he was living with, or was it? It can't. It must have been someone he was living with, presumably. Because if it's your 
boyfriend, then you'd <sighs> then yeah. you'd know their address. Yeah, and but and then what do you do now that you know now, that this reseal guy, the envelope? But then do you just leave it there and wait for them to open it, or <sighs> oh. do you? Do you know what I mean? Do you then yeah. take him and take him out? I, you know, take the guy out and have a beer and go. Listen, I open this and just <laughs> set it all up for him. Who gets dumped by letter these days? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, send an email, t- Snapchat. <laughs> I've changed you, in Camp America. How, how would you do the Snapchat? What's that? How would you do the Snapchat? Just a photo of you with someone else? Yeah, just like <laughs> loving Camp America. Lol. Just wa- <laughs> waving by. <laughs> <laughs> this is a similar. Hi, hello, Josh. A few months ago, I received an A4 sized envelope. I just grabbed it off the floor, ripped it open to find I'd been summoned for driving with no insurance or MOT in Birmingham. Firstly, I feared that someone was using my name and address, but on closer inspection, and to great relief, it was my neighbour upstairs. The postman had delivered it to the wrong address. I'd pretty much destroyed the envelope it came in. I didn't want to put it in his door just in case he came to the door while I was re-delivering it without an envelope. So after careful consideration, I threw it in the bin. No! <laughs> what? <laughs> what is wrong with people? How hard is it to just go up to your neighbour and go, I'm really sorry I opened this by mistake? I know. I mean, that person... I mean, that... I mean, Simon. I mean, in a way, right, I know that I'm gutless enough that I might have done... What would you have done, Alex? Oh, I'd have just chucked it. Would you? <laughs> really? I'm heartless. <laughs> See, I lived... Up until recently, I was living in a block of flats, and there was someone upstairs whose name was A. Hill. A. So, A. Hill. Oh, yeah. So I would always get his mail, and he would always get my mail, and it would always be... And, you you know, you know sometimes you, you look and you go, oh, that's not me, that's not my name. Yeah. Because it was A. Hill, I wouldn't really pay any attention, and I'd open up the mail and go, oh, that's for him. i just, like, leave it out. With did, you ever get, did you ever get anything that... Um, yeah, probably. I think there was just... I mean, I never even met this guy. <laughs> we just had this weird unspoken arrangement of, yeah, I've opened yours, you've opened mine. Sorry about that. When I was at school, I came home, and my dad was furious, and he just... I went into the dining room, and he went to me, so when were you going to tell me you've been suspended? And I was like, this is news to me. <laughs> Don't lie to me. And, like, he went ballistic at me, and then he was like, look at this letter. And it was to someone called Alan Brooker. <laughs> <laughs> and he genuinely still thought he was still you. <laughs> it's not. You definitely christened me Alexander. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Yes. Pixies, where is my mind for two points? Not not to the two people that work here. Mm-hmm. Which film is that at the end of? Alex will give you the option first. What film? Uh, Friends with Benefits? <laughs> Great Correct. Friend. So we move on. It is at the end of Friends with Benefits. You could have given me, if you'd given me the option, name a film forever, I wouldn't have thought of Friends with Benefits. <laughs> Who, this is uh, Adam and Alex here from The Last Leg. And um, so um, what happens in Friends with Benefits? Have um, you seen it? Keep it clean, oh, I mean, Yeah, Justin Timberlake's exceptional, in it? Oh, <laughs> all right, we're moving on. Um, now, it is time for Neil of Fortune, the time when a producer Neil takes centre stage. What movie was it, by the way? Oh, uh, Fight Club. Ah, OK, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you like games like that, then Neil is about to uh, <laughs> prick your interest. Here we go, Neil. Yeah, so Neil of Fortune. Um, I'm going to be honest, normally I'd give you three games to pick from. But yep. I say it's been a busy week. We've both got cold, so you've only got one option. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but it's called The Hills Have Eyes. Oh, great. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah. Do, do you get it, Alex? And I've got eyes, so. <laughs> <laughs> great name. <laughs> it's uh, right up here with the Brooker Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Is the Brooker Prize, um, have you played it? Uh, it was the game we played on the jump. Which, <laughs> what was it? Sorry, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean to be honest with you, nobody really got on board. <laughs> Even I didn't. Well, if you enjoy that, <laughs> it's, be it's, sad. It's on the what, what was the rules of the book? Let, let's move on before you destroy your career. <laughs> it's yeah. just this Again, resignation in your voice whenever you mention the jump. It's like, oh, it's that girl that broke my heart and took off with my best mate. Like it's the same kind of intonation. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> um, this I mean, one. The Hills Have Eyes. The Hills Have Eyes. So I've New got to list, Channel 4. <laughs> I've got a list of... Uh, of this is going to be brilliant. That have the name, surname Hill. Yes. And all you have to do is guess the right colour. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what a I'm game. I'm very impressed with this game. <laughs> it's a good game, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's a great game. So how many have you got? 
Uh, well, let's see how many we get through. Well, okay. no, it's nice to set a target of how many they need to get right. All right, let's say... Oh, it's, a pen- it's between you two, then. Right. Head to head. Let's say five. Yep. Uh, and then I've got a bonus one on the end. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> a bonus round as yeah. well. Okay, so Harry Hill. What colour are his eyes? Who's, who wants... You, you can go first with the first round. I'm going to say uh, brown. I'm going to play tactical and go brown also. Oh, are you allowed to do that? That's fine. All right. You're both wrong. Oh! I think by looking at Google Images, they're blue. <laughs> 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 I'll be honest. I've never been in a quiz show where the answer starts with the phrase, I think by looking at Google Images. <laughs> All right. You should do, if we do Google Images next week, we'll do, um, what colour, um, a celebrity's front doors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make a joke. Uh, right. Damon Hill. Uh, race car driver Damon Hill. Yep. Uh, oh, Alex first this time. Yep. Uh, blue. All day of the week. <laughs> Every day of the week. Uh, I'm going brown again. <laughs> Let me just look on Google. <laughs> uh, oh, no, he's got a visor on that one. So I can't see it. Uh, they are brown. Really? Uh, Thank oh, you. Yeah, one you nil to Adam. Yeah, we're talking. Do you want to do the point, Bell? There we go. Oh. Uh, nice, isn't it? Next up, Lauren Hill. Oh, from, um, the, from, from the Fugees. Fugees. From oh, the brown. Fugees. Definitely brown. Green. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't tell. <laughs> But I'm going to say brown. So oh, I'm two gonna... now. Oh, the Sorry, thing is, though, is that I'm colour blind. So if, if I did know the answers, they'd probably be wrong. Are you really? Yeah, genuinely. God, it never rains, but it pours for you. Doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> it's, it's not just physical, Josh. <laughs> I, really, I really did get dealt a bad hand all the way through. <laughs> Somewhere right now, Glenn That's Hoddle is shaking his head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Glenn Hoddle's like, he deserved it. <laughs> all right, next one. Uh, it's Clint, it's up, Adam. Yeah, Clint Hill, who was a Secret Service agent who jumped into the back of JFK's car when he got shot. Not the, not not the QPR the, centre not back. Not the QPR centre back, so Glenn. <laughs> Uh, wow. You've okay. got very little to go on there. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Uh, I mean, we all remember the footage, but no one was looking at the guy's eyes. The footage eyes. was black and white. You've spotted my trick question. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to give you a point for that. Yeah, you, oh, you yes. deserve that. Well done. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Two, one, final round. Can Alex draw level? Jonah Hill. <sighs> Jonah Hill. <sighs> From The Wolf of Wall Street and that film about baseball. <laughs> Moneyball. Moneyball. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go brown eyes again. I'm gonna go blue. He's drawn level. Oh, oh. The excitement! <laughs> ding 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 ding. Yeah. So. So the bonus question, which is actually now quite dis- dis- decisive. Yep. <laughs> David Bowie. Oh. 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 Um. No, like a labyrinth. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> David Bowie. <laughs> that's, that's David Bowie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It gave me nightmares, that film. Still won't watch it now. That's how much it scared me as a kid. Really? I watched Labyrinth. Do you remember Trials. the eyes? Uh, well, yeah. everyone thinks he's got one, the different colours, but they're not different colours. Oh! Right, I'm going to have to do some quick research. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. It's just that one of his pupils is not dilated, but he's got one pupil that's bigger than the other, and it makes uh, it look like the eyes are different colours, but they're not. Um, so I think it's... I think it might be... Bowie is, like, maybe... Oh, I'm going to say green. Green is a good guess. I'd have gone green. Yeah. Alex. I'll go with bog standard brown. He was punched when he was a kid. He was hit in the face. That's playground. what I thought. Yeah, he was hit when he was and a it, kid. And one of, his, one of his eyes went a bit wonky to you. Yeah. Yeah. Technical Paralympic term. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is correct. Oh, brown? I know my bowie. <laughs> it looks like that on the screen. <laughs> well, I think we're going to have to play a song while we consider. <laughs> I, I think that we're going to have to go to do more Googling there because I thought Adam was right. We're going to... I mean, Neil of Fortune <laughs> has been brought into disrepute. Josh Widdicombe. Podcast. The Chemical Brothers. X of M. What was that laugh, Neil? How fast I could say The Chemical Brothers? Go. The Chemical Brothers on X of M. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe still with Alex Brugger. Hello. Adam Hills. That's me. That's you. Now, mm. we've, we started with opening other people's mail, have you ever? It's turned into a bit of a moral maze. Just to clear up the person that opened the dumping from... Camp America. Yes. Uh, it was a, someone a few doors down and they re-delivered it. 
Okay. So, it isn't a happy ending to the story. But no. it's a moral one. Now, um, pick the moral bones out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> I once opened a birthday card addressed to ex-tenants. I didn't have a forwarding address, only to find it was full of a substantial amount of money. Ooh. <sighs> what did we do? Get on it. We spent it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's a difficult one, that, isn't it? What's substantial, though? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, like, I don't know what... Um, I mean, I'd take 20 quid, but if... Well, if, if this person is, um, is still listening, we'd like to know the exact figure. Also, she does say she's, she split it with her housemates. Right. Oh, that's not 20 quid, then. Next yeah. tenant. I mean, look, there's a hard one, isn't it? You're living somewhere, you get mail that turns up for someone else, and you go, well, I have no idea how to get in contact Could with you return person. a birthday card? You can't return a birthday. You've got to spend it. Yeah, someone's got to benefit out of it. You can't... You, you can't, can't take the badge off the card. <laughs> 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 Just really rub it in. <laughs> um, it's a difficult one. I think you've got to spend it. Maybe we should have a vote on it. I, th I think you need to exhaust all possible avenues first. You need to, you know, if, so if what, there's a return address, then you need to... Yeah. Return address. Re return it. There's re no return, no forward. You could Google the person. Yep. Try oh, yeah, surely in these days of Facebook. Well, if you couldn't do that, why not donate the money to charity? No, yeah, I once nice did that. Yeah. I once did that. I, uh, <laughs> I, I bought a baked... with you? <laughs> <laughs> I bought a baked potato on Manchester High Street, and um, I, got, uh, I got too much change. Yep. And I didn't say anything. But then I walked past a charity collector. Oh, nice. Okay. So I donated that to charity. What do you think of that, Alex? Just, just keep it. Just carry on with your life. <laughs> oh, as a business, they could have written off the tax on the charity donation, so you've screwed them over twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let, let's move on from the moral to uh, James and Didsbury. A bit, bit lighter. My mate shares an initial with his dad. He once opened one of his dad's letters by mistake. It was from a dating agency. His mum and dad are now divorced. Oh! Oh! oh, oh wow! Oh! That's... I mean, look, that's that's the universe just making things turn out the way they need to turn out. Exactly. It's not your fault that you opened that. <laughs> but, oh my goodness. Again, sign up by email. <laughs> <laughs> People yeah. with these letters... The, the flats that I used to live in, the woman who lived right at the top flat, told me she was doing some renovations and she found some letters behind a wall uh, that she'd kind of, you know, knocked mm. down and then opened them because, you know, they were clearly hidden behind a wall in a plastic bag and they turned out they were 100 years old. No. And it was from a 16-year-old girl that lived there to a 40-year-old guy that lived down the road and they were having an affair. Oh, wow. wow. And she found this amazing historical wow. document about an affair that was going on in the house. Uh, from a hundred years ago. What did she do with it? Um, I think she's kept it all. That's amazing. And the weirdest thing was, she realised that the the letters were written by a girl called Kitty. And then one day, as she was walking out the front of the house, she saw the name Kitty scratched just above the oh, door in one oh, of the bricks. Oh, oh, it's oh, quite scary. Like it's gone. That's taken it to a different <laughs> level. That. Oh. Well, there's nothing freaky about it. No, no, but... Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't like that. And the swing was swinging <laughs> <laughs> with a cat on it. Tender by Blur, uh, featuring, um, I don't know what's just happened, but Adam and Alex from the last leg are still here and laughing with intern Charles. Charles, you're not paid to laugh. You're not paid. <laughs> you're not paid. Right? You're not paid. But <laughs> I just um, keep looking at him every now and again after Alex just speaks and I look at him and just say, this is our world. <laughs> this is what we live with every day. Let, let, let's bring some professionalism. Uh, Tender Blur featuring Dave Roundtree from XFM. Uh, you produce the show now? I do, yeah. What time? Uh, nine till ten on Thursday nights. Great at plugging on this show. <laughs> I, mm. Tender, I, I saw Damon Albarn at Latitude, and by this point I'd sobered up a bit. Right. So I remember <laughs> it. Because <laughs> he was on just after Bombay Bicycle Club. Right, so, um, it was good. And then when he brought out De uh, Graham Coxon to play guitar on Tender, and it was at that moment that the, uh, the, sky, the thunder and lightning and the rain started... I mean, I don't use the, the phrase festival moment lightly, but that was really wet. <laughs> <laughs> it was really a wet moment. It was a great moment. It was a great moment. Alex doesn't understand what... I mean, you, I doubt you've ever been to a gig outside, have you, Alex? Uh, <coughs> I went to um, Wireless. Oh, yeah. 
to see. Went to festival. You went to what? Uh, went to V Festival. I saw the Cortinas. Someone chucked a cup and it had uh, warm liquid in it and it wasn't tea or coffee. Oh. Uh, but there was a while Horlicks. I was thinking, oh, I've got tea on me and then I realised it wasn't tea. Oh. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go and watch Eminem now. <laughs> Quite the anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things we're talking about, we haven't really talked about it yet. It's, do you know what? It's, it's Beast or Famine with Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's You're like a kind of mercurial footballer who will either <laughs> score from 30 yards or just hoof it into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll talk about punishments, mainly for Alex. Um, odd punishments your parents gave you. Um, we'll, we'll start with uh, Tonax Sardines, which, I mean, presumably the punishment was their name. Um, <laughs> uh, my dad's ideal punishment was to hit me on the nose with a hot teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that okay. legal? Uh, I think you can get away with it. Is it like when, <laughs> is it like when you hit someone, you know, through the phone book? It doesn't leave any bruises if you is hit them right? on the nose. Yeah, Not these the days. The phone book's getting thinner and films. thinner, mate. <laughs> Uh, my dad always used to threaten a punishment that I could never understand. If my brother and I were fighting each other, mm. he'd go, right, if you kids don't stop fighting, I'm going to give you some boxing gloves and take you down to a boxing ring, and you can fight it out there. <laughs> and we would always go, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How is that a punishment, well, it's, it's like the smoking thing, isn't it? It's I like the, so, if you yeah. smoke all the packet if you get caught smoking. Yeah, my yeah. dad did that when I kept asking if I could try whiskey. And he was like, we'll try it then. Mm. Yeah, and it was minging, and I said, I'll <laughs> drink it now. <laughs> but I did the same thing. Um, I was looking after my little brothers during Euro 2004. Yeah. This, this anecdote might go the same way as the last one. Too. <laughs> but my little brother wanted to this try some beer, so I just gave him a bottle, and I said to him, just assuming that he'd have one sip, and then he'd stop drinking it. And then I looked round, he was absolutely off his face. He'd done the whole bottle. How, how much old, did it? How, how old, old was he? It was like four or five. <laughs> <laughs> and me and my mates had to give him. Pring, we had to give him Pringles to make him sick. And I was going, I've got to make him sick to get it out. Why, well, why would Pringles make him sick? Because to fill his stomach up, I thought. Oh. <laughs> and Jenny and I were going, Did it work? Pringles. Pringles. Did it work? Uh, well, I mean, well, he was once sick. you pop, you can't stop. He, yeah, <laughs> he was sick, and he never said anything about it afterwards. Either, actually, well, and that's how quite sinister. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> I just realised that. How do you explain a hangover to a five-year-old? <laughs> yeah, you don't get because you don't get hungover till you're about twenty, uh, do you? Like, like when you start drinking, really? you don't really get hangovers. That's that, like when you start yeah, out, you're like, yeah, I'd go with that. Yeah. Right, like when you're younger. So ideally, you should really do most of your drinking <laughs> around the age of five. Ideally, you should always drink responsibly. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> ideally, you should always drink responsibly, but we don't live in an ideal world. <laughs> but do, do always drink responsibly. <laughs> Particularly if it's one of the brands that Xfam has linked up with. <laughs> it's probably a series of summer Born to be Chilled shows. <laughs> Company man? Company man. Josh Widdicombe. Coming up on XFM on the Josh Riddicombe Show, the reason Neil is laughing is we have a cabbaging update from James A. Custer. I'm very excited. Are you, Neil? Very excited, but, yeah, just Adam and Alex have no idea what's going on, so I went, just tease cabbaging. They look confused. <laughs> I'll be honest, we were swapping sex stories during the song, and then off the back of that to say, we're going to talk about cabbaging soon. <laughs> Maybe think, well, just, for people at home. <laughs> just for people at home, we weren't, we weren't swapping sex stories. We were listening to the music and, uh, <laughs> and enjoying the adverts as well. This is XMM. Josh Widdicombe. Now, we have an exciting... Uh, we've got... We've, we've had some... Uh, over the last few weeks, some issues with cabbaging of James A. Caster. <laughs> um, if you've been listening, um, Mick Trent, the son of the comedian David Trent, uh, put some cabbage in his bed. He then sent him half a cabbage in the post. <laughs> uh, both times, A. Caster failed to retaliate. Uh, he was cabbaged twice. We then got Mick Trent on the phone on this show. Uh, who told him he was going to continue his reign of terror and that he felt nothing. I wonder what the postage would be on half a cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can think of. I, I, I reckon uh, David Trent would have paid the dad. I don't think Mick Trent would have spent his po pocket money on it. But we have no knowledge of where the other half of the cabbage is. We now have, on the line from Edinburgh, with hopefully a cabbaging update, James A. Custer, good morning. Good morning, Josh. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? 
I'm good, thank you. Yes. Um, so, um, let, let's move on from the pleasantries. Um, <laughs> a, any cabbaging updates? Uh, using me for my cabbaging updates once again. <laughs> Not, it doesn't care how I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, well, there's a couple of cabbaging updates. Number one, this is, this is just a little, a little taster for you. This is a, a warm-up. Somebody has started up a Twitter account called Cabbage. Spelt, <laughs> spelt the way that Mick Trent spells it. Um, so C C A B E D G E, and uh, they are sending me photos of cabbages on a regular basis. <laughs> How often are they doing it? So far, I've got two, um, and um, one is of just a cabbage uh, with, with the words "oi oi savoy" written underneath it, and um, the second one was a van full of cabbages, like a van that you, you couldn't move the cabbages in the van, and it just said "special delivery for Mr. A Castle," and a van full of cabbages. Do we think and, this um, might be Mick Trent? There's no way it's Mick Trent, but I, I I'm. I suspect it's a listener who has decided to take it one step further so that I can't really get away from it. And uh, there are there are loads of people who are liking and retweeting the pictures of the cabbage. Oh. And why I mean, not? I think, I think well, producer yeah. Neil did that, didn't you? Yeah, I liked oh, yeah. it. Yeah, I sent cabbaging a picture back. What of? A cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> Try to blame it his own that, that is okay, yeah. If it, if it was of you, Neil, that would have been really weird. <laughs> just, the photo, just of yourself with the headshot. Smiling, black and white. <laughs> like his casting call photo. <laughs> the sides, all, all the best, producer Neil. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, James, any other updates? Uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, me and David Trent uh, went to see Monty Python at the O2, and we brought our fathers with us as well. And me and my dad were on our way, and uh, Trent's dad, whose name is Monty, Monty Trent, going to see Monty Python. Uh, very funny. We had a real good laugh at that. We called it the full Monty. We, 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 we called it the full Monty. It was so funny. And uh, David, David was late getting there. He was, but his dad Monty was already there, and I was um, told to go and find Monty so he knew where to, where to go. And Monty was waiting outside the BO2, and I walked up to him, and he was smiling at me, and he he had a plastic bag in his hand. He went, "I've got you a present." And I looked at his little smile, and I knew what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was about to get cabbaged again. <laughs> and this is the first time I've been cabbaged, like, face-to-face. <laughs> like, I, I've, I've had it before when it's, like, in the bed and the culprit's asleep or in the post. But this was the first time he handed me the bag, smiling, and I looked in, and he'd wrapped it up like a present. In, in, in happy birthday wrapping paper. <laughs> and I unwrapped it. It was another half a cabbage, cling-filmed with a note written by Monty just saying, cabbaged. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do? Well, I've got a plan, but I can't reveal it on the air because the last time I revealed my plan on the air, they did it to me. <laughs> 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 so, are you, have you seen David Trent? You're living with David Trent, aren't you, in Edinburgh? I'm living with David Trent in Edinburgh. So, I mean, I'm, I think I'm not going to get cabbaged during Edinburgh. I can see him. Right, literally, I'm sitting in front of my computer now. As I'm speaking to you, someone just cabbaged me on Twitter again. <laughs> <laughs> live cabbaging. A live cabbaging. So, yeah, uh, so I, think, I think that's a, it looks like a, a Ford Escort estate car full of uh, cabbage. <laughs> Well, James, um, we're, we're doing XMM Live in Edinburgh uh, from next Saturday till the Tuesday, where you'll be there. Yeah. Um, we'll get cabbaging updates from you then. Um, until then, um, stay safe. Thank you, mate. You too. <laughs> Cheers. Good luck. Josh Widdicombe, XFM. The Strokes on XFM with Josh Widdicombe. <laughs> <laughs> like that? Wow. Yeah? That was like a throwback to the 80s. Yeah. Still, the, what, my presenting, not the strokes. <laughs> no, no, you're kind of X F X F M. Well, you know, Howard Stern's had a strange week, so I'm trying to I'm trying to corner the transatlantic market. <laughs> Don't do your voiceover demo on it. <laughs> I um I will be doing uh, I will be doing um no 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 more voices, but I will be reading one more tweet. Um re punishments. That's Josh, re punishments dot dot dot. It's a good start to a tweet, isn't it? When you put the ellipsis early on to kind of build up the tension. My ex-husband... Oh, awkward. My ex-husband once made our nine-year-old son carry a wooden spoon around for an hour as a punishment for stirring trouble with his brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. 
It's an intelligent punishment. It's an intelligent punishment. Yeah, it's not a spoon on the nose, is it? But it's still intelligent. Do you, have you reached the? Uh, I don't think you're at the level of punishment as a father yet, are you? No, our punishment at the moment is really just right. Go to your room and have some quiet time. Um, right. But I actually sat down with my my daughter's four, and I said to her recently, right, okay, next time you kick off and have a tantrum, I'm not going to get angry and I'm not going to yell at you. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pick you up quietly. And we're going to go away somewhere quiet, and we're going to sit down for a little while. And so that's what we do now. She, if I, if she starts, you know, as soon as she starts off, there's no kind of right. No, 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 I just yeah. pick her up. We walk away, and we just sit down, and then we have some quiet time. See, that's that's. Have you thought about the wooden spoon? <laughs> <laughs> have you I was thought, talking to someone. Have you recently? thought about the hot teaspoon on the nose? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to someone recently who doesn't have kids, an American guy, and he was at a friend's place, and they basically said to their kid, "Right, their kid was being naughty," and they went, "Right, go to your room." And then after about ten minutes, the mum went, "I better go and talk to him." And he was like, "No, the punishment is you go yeah. to your room." Do yeah. Don't go and deal with them psychologically afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> don't deal with the fallout. I've always thought that being sent to your room is not even that bad a punishment anyway, because you've got a telly in there normally. <laughs> chill out in there. You're only going to do what you were doing downstairs up in your room. Well, no, you've and, got to take that away. And, oh. and, you know, with kids now, you've got to go, right, no telly, no iPad. No, you're not no having anything. IPad. No iPad. <sighs> Blimey. It's very different from... So telly, no telly texts. That was my... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no C-fax. Um, if, well, we're, we're done. That's it. I was going to say, if you've got any more, then keep them to yourselves. <laughs> 83936 or at X of M are uh, ways you can contact us and we won't read it. <laughs> Josh Whittacombe, Coldplay more or less bring us to the end of the Josh Whittacombe show. Only time. We, we should, um, we should do, do some, um selling of uh, of product so um alec well let, let's start with you neil would you like to plug anything um usual shows i look after as well dave roundtree thursdays nine from ten nine till ten nine till ten uh nine from ten one <laughs> <laughs> nine till ten i'm not good at this i'll carry on is that it yeah, you're out, I'm out. <laughs> is, that, is that the plan wow. wow. i failed oh, okay communion presents tonight ten till eleven ten till eleven which okay. is good. 10 to 11. 10.15 the... Right, anyway. Um, we are doing the XFM show live um, in Edinburgh. It's not on the radio. It will be podcast, but you do, you, there'll be visual stimulus as well, so you should buy a ticket. 10.30, the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, in Assembly George Square. All the usuals, Nish Kumar, James Acaster, Matthew Crosby. Henry Packer will be drawing the show live on stage. Tim Key, one night, is going to fire the flame off a candle with a gun. A Nerf gun. A gun. <laughs> and, um, you know, what What more could you want? Uh, buy tickets at edfringe.com or xfm.co.uk. Adam, yes. any Edinburgh tip? Oh, by the way, last leg. Last That's leg. the reason you're here. Last leg, Friday night, 10pm, Channel 4. Yep. Also on the Channel 4 OD. I almost called it the 4-player then, which is a very different... Why did they not go with that? <laughs> Why did they not call it 4-player? <laughs> of all the things they could have... Okay. Oh, my plug's gone now, then. Oh, uh, well, you can plug it again. Um, Adam, Edinburgh Tips? Edinburgh Tips. I have two shows. Louisa Omilan is doing a show called Am I Right, Ladies? Uh, I saw her show last week in Montreal, and then I saw the preview for this show a couple of nights ago. It was one of the best things I've ever seen. Wow. Um, Oh, I mean, that's honestly, just absolutely brilliant. It's a half party, half comedy show. Um, so that's Louisa Omila. Yeah, can I just say so is our XFM show? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to undercut every plug. <laughs> um, and here's one you will never heard of. An Australian comedian called Justin Hamilton is doing a show called Johnny Loves Mary Forever. And it's thoughtful and it's brilliant and it's so beautifully written and he's one of the best performers in Australia. So, uh, Do you know what it's on? Uh, it's at Assembly. Mm. Uh, I don't know what time. But Justin Hamilton, Louisa oh. Omiland, those oh. are the two names. Could I write that down? Let's Could I write that down? Yeah. Alex, any tips? Any, not for Edinburgh, any football season? What, just general football season tips? Yeah, I mean, if you... Um, don't put your new Arsenal season ticket in amongst the post because your missus will throw it out <laughs> and you'll have to get a new one. Thank for that, Alex. Um, I <laughs> would tip... Th things I've seen in preview that have been great. Ed Gamble, um, Susie Ruffle... Nathaniel Metcalf, loads and loads of things. Uh, what I am going to, shall I, I do that as my tips? Yeah, okay. Reese James, Kevin Day, Matt Ford, Tom Neenan, James Acaster, Nathaniel Metcalf, John Kearns, Ivo Graham. I'm going to see Nish Kumar as well. Nish Kumar. Yeah, I'm going to that. I haven't written that one down. Just took that as red. Coming up, 
after we finished. Phil Clifton. Is that, is that, is that it? Thank you for coming in, guys. Thank oh, you, guys. pleasure. Thanks for having us. And more, thank you for listening.